Hi, hello, good morning. This is Ramesh Kumar Lal Kota, Assistant Professor of Botany, MBS Government Arts and Science College, Mahbub Nagar. In our last class, we discussed uh, Anunnaki family. Today, we will see Caparidaceae. Yeah. This Caparidaceae family belongs to Dicotyledons class and the subclass Polypetale, series Thalamiflorae, or the Parietales family Caparidaceae. Uh, so, uh, the, uh, um, when it comes to diversity and uh, distribution, uh, the family is widely distributed in tropical regions of the world. Uh, what are tropical regions? The regions which are uh, close to the equator called tropical regions, where you can find uh, relatively high temperatures. And this, uh, in this family, some genera are also found in the temperate regions. Uh, what are temperate regions uh, which are uh, away from the equator and they are relatively cool regions okay so in both the regions that is in tropical and temperate climates that you can find uh, these plants uh, this family uh, totally it is represented by 39 genera and 650 species all over the world when coming to india it is represented by seven genera with 55 species and in telangana and ap uh, where i belong uh, there are a total of 14 species spread over four genera and the largest genus of the family is uh, Caparis, and the type genus itself is a Caparis. And this genus, as a whole, it contains 350 species. Okay, so this is the largest genus, as a, and also it is the type genus of this family. And now we will see some of the important plants or familiar plants of this family. Uh, you can see here Kadaba indica, also known as Kadaba fruticosa. This is Kadaba. Trifoliata, Caparis apila, which is a xerophyte. Uh, it is also known as Caparis decidua. And this is Caparis zelenica. In our local language, that is in Telugu language, we call it as Adivinimma. Okay. This is Cleom viscosa, which is very common during rainy seasons. <clears throat> we, uh, in our local language, we call it as Kukava minta. Uh, this is Cleom gynandra, also called Gynandropsis pentaphila. Uh, in local language, we call it as Vaminta. This is Critaiba religiosa, which is a tree in this family. This is a, a Merua arenaria. This Merua arenaria is a standard shrub. That is, it is a climber. Okay, so these are some of the important plants of this family. And uh, uh, coming to its habitat, uh, most of the plants are mesophytes. As you all know that mesophytes are nothing but the plants which grow. Uh, where the availability of water and sunlight is up to their requirement. Okay, so most of the plants are mesophytes. And uh, regarding to uh, regarding its habit, uh, mostly herbs uh, such as Cleom viscosa, Cleon uh, gynandra are examples for the herbs. Herbs are nothing but the plants which have uh, very weak stems uh, and uh, they are green in color. The stems are green in color. Okay, uh, so. Um, these are the examples of uh, herbs, Cleom viscosa and Cleom gynandra. A few are shrubs, uh, example, Caparis horida. And uh, this one you can see here, um, uh, what is this, uh, Merua arenaria. This is a creeping shrub, creeping shrub. We call it as scandin shrubs, okay. Then uh, rarely trees are also seen. Example is Cartaiva religiosa, it is a medium sized tree and most of the plants are perennial uh, the herbs alone are annuals or biennials okay and the remaining shrubs and trees are perennials um, and caparis decidua this is a zero fight of this family this is regarding its habitat now we will see vegetative morphology in vegetative morphology the root system uh, the root system is tap root system it is a branch and extends deep into the soil okay so all the dicots they have taproot system. And when coming to stem, uh, stem is aerial, usually erect, and uh, in some the stem is prostrate. You can see here uh, Cleom simplicifolia. It is a prostrate one. It uh, creeps on the substratum. Okay, so mostly it is uh, uh, aerial, erect, but in Cleom simplicifolia it is prostrate, and. Uh, uh, Scandent in uh, Merua arenaria, as we discussed earlier, and in Caparis, it is woody in nature. 
okay in uh, cleom uh, gynandra cleom viscosa it is uh, herbaceous and uh, branched and it is uh, hairy you can see here uh, hairy uh, all the white color small hair like structures uh, with a woolly texture uh, we call it as a pubescent stem okay so pubescent stems are seen in this family and sometimes uh, the stems are with spines also spinose and pubescent uh, this uh, stems are present okay then when coming to uh, leaves leaves are petiolate the stipulate are extipulate that means stipules may be present may not be present what are stipules stipules are the small outgrowth present at the base of the petiole okay the leaf base possess uh, small uh, scale leaf like structures if they are present we call it as stipulate leaf and if they are absent we call it as extipulate okay so in this family the leaves may be stipulate or extipulate but in caparis decidua the leaves are deciduous that means uh, the tree sheds the leaves completely okay uh, then uh, stipules are modified into uh, spines you can see here this these are the spines which are modified stipules so this is the leaf at the leaf blaze you can find the stipules but here the stipules are modified into spines okay and uh, leaves are simple in uh, uh, merua arenaria cleome simplicifolia you find uh, simple leaves um, but uh, they are palmately compound in crataiva cleome gynandra uh, they are alternate uh, leaf lamina is a rectangular lanceolate ovate or linear apex may be acute or hairy and the venation is reticulate venation okay so the leaves are simple or they may be compound if they are compound uh, you can see here the example here uh, in this picture this is a pentafoliate leaves okay palmately compound pentafoliate leaves uh, are present in in this family okay. then uh, coming to the uh, floral morphology the inflorescence commonly apical or rarely axillary what is apical apical means the apical bud uh, develops into uh, inflorescence axillary means the uh, inflorescence develops uh, in the leaf axis okay so here it may be uh, apical or rarely it may be axillary okay and uh, uh, the the inflorescence is a raceme type in cleome or corymb in uh, cleome gynandra and uh, um, in some it is a umbel caparis sepiaria it is umbel you can see here in this picture uh, what is the racim uh, racimose inflorescence racimose inflorescence is nothing but uh, it 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 has a, the peduncle of the inflorescence as indefinite growth and all the flowers uh, which are formed are arranged in a cropetal succession so it may be a simple racim with only one flower or it may be a, a corymb corymb is nothing but uh, the flowers which are present on the inflorescence at the basal region they are with a uh, long pedicels and which are present at the apex region they are with short pedicels all the pedicels uh, all the flowers come um, in on, uh, into the same plane on the surface see they are all present on the same plane at the surface area okay the lower flowers uh, with uh, longer pedicels and the uh, flowers which are present at the apical region they are with short pedicels so that all the flowers come to a same plane at the surface area. So this is corin. It is also uh, seen in some of the members such as Cleome gynandra. So this is the Cleome gynandra where you can see the corin inflorescence. Uh, this is Cleome viscosa where you can see the racimos type of inflorescence. And it is Caparis sepiaria <clears throat> where the flowers show, the flowers are grouped into umbels. What is the umbel? Say from the same point that is from the uh, thalamus of the uh, inflorescence all the flowers see you can see here all the flowers they arise from the same point okay it just looks like a um, uh, what you call the flower bouquet okay so this is umbel and in caparis zelanica all the flower buds are ar arranged in superimposed manner you can see here 
all the flower buds are arranged in the superimposed manner which are developed in the leaf axil this is the leaf from the axis of the leaf all the uh, floral buds they develop and they are present superimposed superimposed is nothing but one above the other okay so here in the paris zelanica you can see such type of inflorescence this is regarding the inflorescence and next when come to the uh, individual flower uh, flowers are pedicillate pedicillate means they have the pedicels the stalk of the inflorescence is called peduncle and the stalk of individual flowers in the uh, inflorescence we call it as a pedicel so these flowers are pedicillate and they have the bracts bracts okay so they are bracteate and uh, bracts are trilobed in cleum you can see here clearly this is a trilobed uh, bract which look like a trifoliate leaf see this is bract this is not the leaf hmm? so in cleum we will see the trilobed trifoliate uh, bract okay uh, and um, a leaf like in uh, leaf like and uh, uh, ibracteolate usually uh, these uh, flowers are complete and actinomorphic. What is complete? If all the four holes are present, we call the such type of flowers as uh, complete flowers and uh, actinomorphic. Actinomorphic means you can see here on any plane, the flower can be divided into two equal halves. Okay. We call it as the radial symmetry. Okay. If the flowers have radial symmetry, they can be uh, made into two equal halves in any plane. Such type of flowers show actinomorphic symmetry so this is the actinomorphic so the flowers are bisexual they are complete they are actinomorphic and the flowers are hypogynous what is hypogynous hypogynous means uh, see this is the gynosium all other parts of the flower develop from below the gynosium hypogynous from below the gynosium all other parts such as stamens uh, the petals and the sepals they develop from below the gynosium and the position of the ovary is superior it is present above all other floral parts so the in hypogynous flowers the position of the ovary is superior so these flowers are hypogynous and uh, they are ibracteolate okay bracts are present on the peduncle but not on the pedicels okay so this is regarding the flowers and uh, <clears throat> in uh, uh, Caparis aphylla, you see zygomorphic flowers. Zygomorphic flowers are the flowers uh, which show bilateral symmetry. Bilateral symmetry means in only one plane, we can make the flower into two equal halves. Okay. Then, uh, when come to its, uh, in uh, some plants such as uh, Cleum gynandra, a gynophore is formed between androsium and gynosium androsium and gynosium uh, the stalk the peduncle uh, is elongated uh, which is called as gynophore okay it forms between androsium and gynosium in some others the central position of the thalamus elongates and forms androphore androphore means the elongation of the uh, floral axis that is peduncle uh, between uh, petals and androsium. If, it, uh, if the peduncle extends or elongates between uh, corolla and androsium, we call it as an androphore. And if, if it has an elongation between androsium and gynosium, we call it as a gynophore. So we can see androphore in some plants and gynophores in some other plants. And in Crataiva, uh, we see both the um, uh, androphore and gynophore are present. And it is called gynandrophore. Gynandrophore condition is seen in Crataiva religiosa. Uh, then, when coming to its uh, calyx, uh, these flowers are tetramerous. So, all the floral parts, either they may be a four in number or multiples of four. So, the sepals are four in number and they are polysepalous. Polysepalous means they are free. See, you can see here the sepals are free, they are not united. We call it as polysepalous condition. If they are united, we call it as gamosepalous. Okay. So here you can see the polysepalous condition and the sepals are arranged in two plus two condition. That means the outer hole has two and the inner hole has two. Okay. And the estivation is uh, valvate estivation. What is estivation? Estivation is the arrangement of uh, 
uh, floral pots in bud condition is known as estivation. Here, the estivation is volvate estivation. Volvate estivation is nothing but where the edges of the floral pots just touch each other. Okay, they do not overlap, but just touch each other. Okay, so here, uh, this calyx shows uh, volvate estivation. Okay, and uh, see the outer surface of the sepals are covered with glandular hair. You can see here small hair. Okay, this gland they are glandular in nature. So outer surface of the sepals are covered with glandular hair. And when coming to petals, uh, petals are usually four in number, rarely eight. Okay, four are multiples of four, rarely eight in number, and um, um, <clears throat> they are cross shaped. Just as in Brassicaceae family, they are cruciform. The petals are cross shaped. They are four in number. They are cross shaped. And in uh, Emblingia, uh, pet, uh, the petals are fused. Actually, these are polypetalous. But in Emblingia, these petals are fused. And in Caparis decidua, uh, the petals are absent. Caparis decidua, petals are absent. And uh, estivation is uh, volvate in Crataiva, and it is. Uh, imbricate in caparis and cleome. You can see here imbricate. Uh, what is imbricate estivation? Here, uh, the petal, one petal is completely in. Both the edges of the petal are completely in, and in uh, the petal which is opposite to this, it has two edges outside. See, the two edges are outside. Here, the two edges are inside, and the remaining three. Petals are with one edge inside and one edge out. You can see here one edge outside, one edge in, one edge outside, one edge in. So this type of floral arrangement is known as imbricate type. And this type of imbricate estivation is seen in comparison cleome of this family. So this is regarding the uh, corolla. Now we will see uh, the structure of androsium, how androsium is present. Okay. Uh, the members of this uh, family show uh, variation with regard to the number of stamens. Um, usually, the stamens are more in number, but in Kadaba, there are four. Uh, in uh, Cleum gynendra, there are six in number. You can see here. So, this is Kadaba. You have only four stamens. And here, this is Cleum gynendra. You have six stamens. Okay. You can see here, this is androphore. Just now we discussed, no, androphore. Androphore, this, is, uh, this whole thing is the peduncle, okay? So the floral axis, if it extends between the uh, corolla and androsium, then we call it as androphore. And the extension or elongation of this floral axis uh, between androsium and gynosium, then we call it as a gynophore, okay? In Cleom gynandra, we find both this uh, gynandrophoric condition, okay? So anthers are numerous. And um, hmm. uh, these uh, uh, stamens are, they are longer than the petals and uh, uh, they are attractively colored. The petals are, uh, these uh, stamens are also attractively colored, see? How beautiful they are. Hmm? So these, um, uh, stamens, they are dithecus, dithecus, you can see here in this structure, dithecus stamens, they are basic fixed, the filament is fixed at the base of this dithecus anther, and they are uh, extrodes, uh, show longitudinal dehiscence. What is extrodes? Extrodes means they are exposed towards outside the enclosure. Uh, you can see these stamens from uh, far distance also, okay. Uh, introdes means if, uh, uh, the floral parts completely cover the essential organs, then we call it as introns. Uh, if the floral parts are exposed and we can see them, um, that is the essential organs, then we, can, we call it as uh, extrodes. okay? So here extrodes uh, and um, show longitudinal dehiscence and uh, androsium is raised on androphore. So this is androsium, the stamens, all the stamens together form the androsium. They are formed on a Androphore. Okay. Gynosium. Gynosium, it has two corpels, bicorpellary, syncarpus, ovary is superior. Just now we discussed that the 
all other parts develop from below the ovary so the position of the ovary is superior and is raised on a gynophore so this is the gynophore which is the enlargement between the androsium and gynosium so it is raised on a gynophore and the ovule is a uni the ovary is a unilocular ovary with compilotropous ovules so see these are the ovules which are present in parietal presentation and these ovules are compilotropous ovules what are compilotropous ovules this uh, they um, initially when they are formed they make uh, 90 degrees uh, the body of the ovule make 90 degrees with the funiculus but during its development uh, it just uh, stretches towards the funicle okay uh, making a larger angle than the 90 degrees okay so here the embryo sac is lightly curved and the micropyle is come closer to this funicle okay so this is uh, compilotropous ovule so these compilotropous ovules are present inside the uh, locule of the ovary uh, in parietal placentation sometimes uh, bilocular uh, it looks like bilocular due to the formation of a false septum false septum is formed in some species so due to the formation of that false septum you can uh, Im, uh, you can um, imagine it as to be a uh, bilocular ovary okay and uh, the style is short so, see this is the gynosium it bears style and the stigma this is the stigma stigma is bicapitate and uh, this is the style and this is the ovary style is very short and uh, Okay, this is regarding the gynosium. Now, the next part, a uh, pollination. Pollination takes place uh, by insects. Uh, after uh, pollination, fertilization occurs and uh, fruit formation takes place. Fruit is siliqua uh, in Cleome viscosa and it is berry in Crataiva or droop in Emblygia. See, you can see here, these are berries, Caparis and Crataiva, you can see them. Uh, these fruits are berries. And here you can see this is a siliqua, the capsule descends by valves. When the fruits get mature, these uh, capsule descends uh, by valves, okay? Liberating the seeds. So this is the fruit of this family. And when coming to the seeds, seeds are reniform or circular, and these are non endospermic uh, with a, a large embryo. Okay. So, this is regarding um, seeds. Uh, when coming to the floral form line floral diagram, uh, we said that these, uh, fl uh, these flowers are actinomorphic, a bisexual, calyx uh, is present in two holes, two plus two condition, and uh, Carola has four petals and they are free as, as these are uh, polypetalous. Uh, uh, we are writing the four out uh, without any brackets. If we write brackets here, then it implies that they are uh, gamopetalous. But here they are polypetalous, so we are not writing inside the bracket. Okay, and androsium is four or infinity. Uh, a lot variety of uh, uh, androsium is seen in this species. Some have four, some have six stamens, some have many stamens. So we are writing four to infinity. Okay. And the gynosium bicorporally, bicorporally with hypogynous condition. That means ovary position is superior. So we are writing, uh, we are underlining the ovary position. Okay. So this is floral formula and this is floral diagram depiction of floral formula in the form of a picture is known as a floral diagram. You can see here uh, the outermost hole, two plus two conditions, sepals are present, four in number, see, two plus two condition, okay? Then followed by petals, petals are also four in number and inside which uh, you can see here, these are stamens, stamens are four, six are many in number and this is a unilocular bicorpellary ovary with parietal placentation. Ovules are seen here inside. So this is the floral diagram. Now we will see uh, the economic importance of this family. 
in economic importance, uh, some of the plants, uh, uh, the decoction of the bark of Caparis decidua is used in cough and uh, asthmatic diseases. Okay, the decoction made up of uh, bark of uh, Caparis decidua is used uh, in cough and uh, uh, asthmatic diseases. And the dried uh, roots are used in fever and fruits for cardiac diseases okay um, the same way the decoction obtained from the leaves and bark of uh, caparis or sepiaria is used in treatment of skin diseases and the dried root powder of uh, caparis monophylla is used for epilepsy okay. the leaf extract of uh, cleum viscosa is used for uh, ear aches and uh, uh, that of cli uh, cleum gynandra for relief from rheumatic pains. So these are some of the uh, medicinal uses of the plants of this family. And a few are vegetables also. The young leaves of cleum gynandra are used as a, a leafy vegetable and the fruits of caparis horida, caparis decidua are used in uh, preparation of pickles. Okay. And the cleum spinos and crativa uh, adenosoni are the ornamental plants of this family. Okay. Uh, when coming to the classification, uh, as these are seed bearing plants, they are placed in the division phenerograms. These are flowering plants, that's why they are placed in phenerograms. And uh, uh, due to the presence of taproot system, reticulate venation, tetramerous flowers, and uh, two cotyledons are seen, and uh, radial vascular bundles are present. So all these, uh, because, uh, due to presence of all these characteristics, these are placed in dicotyledony. And next, uh, perianth is present in uh, uh, two series, that is biseriate perianth is seen. Uh, it is distinct corolla with three petals. Okay, by per, uh, perianth is in, seen in uh, two distinct holes, that is perianth is nothing but non-essential organs, calyx and corolla, they are distinct, that is diclimatous condition is seen, okay? So because of these characteristics, these are placed in polypetale. And next, uh, uh, flower is a hypogynous and thalamus is conical in shape. Uh, these characters belong to thalamiflora, so it is placed in series thalamiflora. Parietes, carpels fused, unilocular ovary with marginal placentation. So it is placed in order parietes. And all these characters are uh, together placed in Caparidaceae family. So this is the systematic position as per Bentham and Hooker. So this is all about the family Caparidaceae. Hope uh, you understand and you enjoyed my lecture. Thank you for watching.